to this country by the Pope is historic for all sorts of reasons, most of them historic. It's also highly controversial, not least for what he did or didn't do to act against priests who abused children. As a cardinal for 23 years, he ran the Vatican Department charged with investigating miscreant priests. Pope Benedict's defenders say he was thwarted in major cases by another influential cardinal and by his predecessor, Pope John Paul II. Peter Marshall reports now on how in inquiries into the most serious abuse cases of all ran aground in the Holy See. What is truth? Truth sets you free. God is truth. The truth about sexual abuse in the Catholic Church has been hidden for many years in the highest reaches of the Vatican. So what's been the role of Joseph Ratzinger, first as Cardinal, now as Pope? Ratzinger had the case and he didn't do anything for six years. It was not, not Cardinal Ratzinger's responsibility. He does seem to be frightened, he seems to be uh, um, boxed in in many ways. The cover-up has been going on for years and people have lost their faith in, in the institution. The way he deals with paedophile priests will inevitably be the measure by which Pope Benedict's papacy is judged. He's spoken angrily of the filth in the church, but he's also been accused of failing to clean up that filth. So is he the solution, or is he a part of the problem? That question has been asked increasingly here in Middle Europe over the past 15 years, since the head of the Austrian church, a cardinal, was himself revealed to be a paedophile. Hans Hermann Gruer is the most senior priest to have resigned over child abuse in the last 50 years. He'd been Cardinal Archbishop of Vienna for a decade when allegations were made public that he'd habitually molested boys throughout his career. By that stage, 1995, the damage had been done both to his victims, there were, it's claimed, literally thousands, and to the reputation of the church. First, they couldn't believe it. And they didn't, some of them didn't want to believe it because it, uh, the picture of the world, yes, the, the perspective of faith was, uh, was shattered. And so I think it was, uh, yes, it was a shocking, a shocking experience for the Church of Austria. Monsignor Helmut Schuller is a former Vicar General of Vienna. These days, from his small parish of Probsdorf in northern Austria, he finds himself at odds with the Vatican he thinks has betrayed many Catholics. He was outraged not only by Cardinal Gruer's conduct, but that the Vatican hadn't investigated his record. The Vatican must have known about it, I think. They should have looked at to this file and they should have decided that this man is, is not able to become Archbishop. In Austria, many Catholics left the church in disgust. Half a million joined a protest movement against Cardinal Gruer and the Vatican. The case of Cardinal Gruer was such a, a terrible shock and uh, a shock of, of a kind uh, we could not imagine. And this is also true for the Pope, I think. As a theological conservative, Gruer had been a favourite of Pope John Paul II, and now the Pope seemed slow to act. He was brought up in a kind of Catholicism where a Pope would never admit to that kind of thing. Going admit on. to knowing about it? Yeah, finished. So he just turned his, turned his head away? Yes, those were problems. Um, a cardinal was not just not investigable, <laughs> that's a word. Couldn't investigate Gruer. So he'd accept to take their word for anything? Well, that's what we've been doing all this time, isn't it? The people were shocked. They were angry. They were disappointed. Did the Vatican know? The Vatican didn't, didn't say anything. Yes. Cardinal, Cardinal Gruer was, was received at the Vatican, carried on his, his office, and it was a very... A very strange time also. The man with notional responsibility for looking into the abuse allegations against Gruer was another cardinal, Joseph Ratzinger. So the argument goes. But from his offices for the doctrine of the faith in the Vatican, his inquiries were quickly abandoned. 
An aide to the current Cardinal of Vienna says Ratzinger was sabotaged. The inner law of the Catholic Church is very clear. The only person uh, who is able uh, to make an investigation on a cardinal is the Pope. So you're saying it was Pope John Paul II who should have acted? I think it was the responsibility not, not of the Pope himself, uh, but of some councillors around the Pope, uh, who were of the opinion uh, that all, all uh, the cases brought up against uh, Cardinal Grower uh, were uh, media gossip, media gossip. Media gossip was the phrase of a man who's been a key figure in the Vatican for 20 years, first as Secretary of State and now as Dean of the College of Cardinals, Angelo Sedano. In theory, John Paul as Pope had the powers of an absolute monarch, but according to a former Vatican canon lawyer, he remained dependent on Sedano. The flow of information um, is something that's absolutely important and that can can stop or be diverted anywhere along the line. Um, getting uh, his will done ha depends on the cooperation, the complete cooperation of people in the lower offices and their understanding of what he wants and their acceptance of what he wants. How important would Cardinal Sedano have been? Absolutely important, probably more important than anybody else. He was the gatekeeper. He was the gatekeeper of the whole works. He was the Secretary of State. Cardinal Sedano, behind the scenes, was to prove a continuing obstacle for Ratzinger and investigations into abuse. In the same period, the late 90s, across the Atlantic, there were even graver allegations against another paedophile priest with a truly global reputation. Once again, central to the investigation was Cardinal Ratzinger. The priest was Marcial Maciel de Guiardo. His influence covered the world. He raised billions of dollars, created a network of schools, seminaries and universities, created a religious movement uh, that spread to four continents. He was a notorious child molester, he was a morphine addict, and he used money to secure power, and he was lionized. Jason Berry has been investigating Massiel for nearly 25 years. He says the Vatican had complaints against the priest stretching back to the 50s. Once again, the failure to act left victims unprotected. Massiel also had secret relationships with various women. Children were born. He'd abused them too. I've interviewed uh, pedophiles in prison. I've interviewed a great many of the abuse survivors. I've read mountains of documents and I don't think any of those priests even comes close to Maciel in terms of uh, raw evil, pure decadence. It's, it's almost mind-boggling what he did. Maciel was born in 1920 into a prominent Catholic family in Mexico. Family connections secured his ordination after he'd been expelled from two seminaries. By the 1940s, Maciel had founded the Legion of Christ, a movement which now claims a presence in 23 countries with a membership of thousands of priests and laity. At one point, the Vatican suspended Maciel amid allegations he'd abused seminarians and was hooked on morphine. But for undisclosed reasons, he was reinstated and his behaviour was unchecked for a further five decades. Así como al padre Marcial Maciel. As with Cardinal Gruer, Pope John Paul was a fan of Maciel According to a former canon lawyer at the Vatican Embassy in Washington, this was another huge misjudgment. He was in denial about the harm done by Maciel. Maciel was a favorite for, I think, a couple of reasons. One, he was a massive fundraiser. Two, uh, his people were making significant payoffs to Vatican officials to maintain their stature and their place of favor. Uh, and three, he and his organization pledged absolute personal loyalty to the person of the Pope. By the late 1990s, the complaints against Maciel were becoming impossible to ignore. At the Vatican, Cardinal Ratzinger made a move to investigate, but then stopped. Once the case was filed, it promptly sank into limbo and stayed there for the next six years. So, yes, Ratzinger had the case, 
and he didn't do anything for six years. In fact, the Pope has continued to praise Father Marcial Maciel. In Rome, challenged by American TV, Cardinal Ratzinger wasn't happy. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, recently appointed by the Pope to investigate the entire sex abuse scandal in the church, became visibly upset when we tried to ask him about Father Maciel. Now, there's a question whether you... But come to me when the moment is given. Not, not, not yet. Well, we tried to ask you questions. Ratzinger and Pope John Paul had come under pressure from Cardinal Angelo Sedano. Sedano and Maciel had been allies since the 1970s. Maciel donated thousands of dollars to the Cardinal, and Cardinal Sedano was a staunch defender of Maciel's Legion of Christ. For Cardinal Ratzinger, with his stalled investigation of Maciel, it was all a lesson in power. Imagine his horror at having to deal with such a corrupt figure as Maciel while he's under pressure from Sedano the Secretary of State, the highest person, you know, in this Vatican political culture. I imagine he had some sleepless nights. Uh, Ratzinger is clearly um, uh, an intellectual. He's a very cerebral person. And the impression given is that he re relates to issues on that level. On Sedano? Sedano is, is not known as being a, a great intellectual or, or a scholar by any means, but he certainly is a man who knows how to man manipulate power and, uh, and operate organizations. So a word in, in John Paul's ear, Sedano may have carried more weight. I believe so. Only with Pope John Paul's death and Ratzinger's election as Pope Benedict did things change. Within months, he'd banished Maciel to a life of penitence and prayer. Maciel died in 2008. The Legion of Christ, which had sought its founder's canonization, has been left in shock by the revelations. A spokesman told Newsnight it's planning for the future with hope and humility. As for Cardinal Sedano, who defended Maciel, he's refused to speak to Newsnight. Sedano is now Dean of the College of Cardinals and has recently been involved in a new row over Pope Benedict's handling of sex abuse allegations. An attempt to defend the Pope against accusations he hadn't done enough or had even blocked investigations into sex abuse were to lead to another extraordinary revelation. This one exposed a clear split in the Vatican. At Easter in Austria, the current Cardinal of Vienna, the man who succeeded the paedophile Cardinal Gruhr, went on TV to defend Pope Benedict's record. As Ratzinger, he said, he'd wanted to investigate Gruhr, but had been blocked. The obstruction was Cardinal Sedano. This public reproach, Cardinal versus Cardinal, was unprecedented. What all of this says is that this very thick blanket of secrecy, there are holes in the blanket and the light is, is coming through, uh, perhaps because they realize that this is a much different world than the world of 20 or 50 years ago, and maintaining the secrecy is simply not possible. Pope Benedict's reputation was supposed to be enhanced by the news he'd tried to act against paedophile priests, yet he was still unhappy at the airing of the Vatican's dirty washing. He summoned both Sedano and the Austrian to rebuke them for making their differences public. It's a telling example of a pope conflicted. You see, harming the church, I mean, admitting that the church had gone wrong, this is a terribly difficult problem to solve. Um, they, 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 it's not popular in Rome. Has there been a sort of evolution, though, in his, in his thinking? Do you think? I hope. I hope and pray. Because if there hasn't, that's not good. <laughs> God is truth and truth sets you free. The Gospels proclaim it and the Catholic Church has spent 2,000 years ostensibly spreading the word. Yet when it came to its worst child abusers, Gruer and Maciel, the word was erased. The offenders were allowed to step aside. There was never a hint of anyone going to jail. That's the truth Pope Benedict has to bear. Peter Marshall there. Now the S